Okay. Hello, welcome to a new series. This is Noob's Guide for Sekiro. I've died twice. This game I really love. This game I've been playing recently. And uh, I just wanted to do kind of a guide for it because a lot of people obviously have a lot of trouble with the game. It's quite fucking hard. So hopefully this can help you in some way. Um, this is my third playthrough of the game. I have done my original playthrough and I did a new game plus playthrough after that. And yeah, I'm just going to be playing through the game again, trying to talk about everything that's important. I'm going to be getting the base ending, the base normal ending that isn't complicated in any way. Um, just because it's the easiest. Also, I haven't done it yet, so might as well. Um, but uh, this is not going to be a find every item and every little crevice type of guide. A lot of people do that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be trying to find every single item. I'm just going to find what's important and what's in my way. If, it, if there's an item in my way, I'll grab it. If it's something important, I'll go out of my way to get it. You know what I mean? And I'll explain anything that might be important. Even if it's not impl important to this playthrough, I'm still going to kind of grab it, show where it is. It'll be important. Um, I'm also not going to be doing a lot of the extra stuff. Um, I will be fighting all of the optional bosses. Uh, I probably won't be fighting the Headless, just because they're kind of annoying, and I've beaten them once before. And I don't really use the Spirit Fall items very much. I'll explain about that kind of stuff, but I probably won't do a lot of that. So, yeah. Also, I realize I'm talking over the cutscene, but everybody's seen this. It's the first thing you see when you get the game, so... You know, um, I'm just trying to get out as much information. Um... In this particular guide, we are going to be doing the tutorial section and some of the first areas, fighting the first mini-boss, which I know that most people have probably passed that at this point, but I'm not going to start in the middle of the game, so, you know. Now, I would like to mention, um, I will be actually skipping most cutscenes or dialogue in the game. Uh, and the reason for that is just because some people might have not seen it, they might be watching the guide before they even go into a new area, try and figure out all the important stuff they need to get there. Um, I would recommend not doing that, but if you do that, it's fine. I would recommend, you know, going through an area and then watching this to see if you missed anything. That's what I normally do with guides for games like this. My first playthrough was almost completely blind. Some 20 years after oh, yeah. Ishin's coup, the Ashina clan... There's probably the only cutscene in the game I'm going to watch, collapse. just because, um, you know. And the shinobi, known as Wolf, had lost everything. Well, actually, I will be watching the next cutscene. This is, um, took him in, uh, pre-recording, and I'm voicing over this. Because of how Xbox works. So, you know. I'll be trying to explain everything relevant to the game. I'm um, trying to get out some of the easier, more uh, starter information in this video because it's a tutorial video. But yeah, basically the story revolves around Kuro, your master, who is the divine heir of the dragon's heritage, has some blood that can resurrect people. A 
so I'm sorry if I miss something. I'm going to be going pretty fast through the game. Um, so if I do miss an important item or an important quest line or something, please inform me of it. I'm trying to do all the NPC quest lines in this playthrough. I'm trying to show how to do them. So, yeah. Also, I apologize if it sounds a little weird because I am eating right now. But now we're in the playable section. This first item is the ornamental letter, and um, you also get Kuro's Charm if you've done a previous playthrough. It doesn't have to be New Game Plus uh, to get it. It could just be a playthrough as long as you've done any ending other than the bad end, which I think we all know what that is if you play that far in the game. Um, but basically, the ornamental letter is just saying, like, yo, Kuro's at the Moonview Tower. Go we'll find him. Um, the... Curl's Charm, basically what it is, it is a, um, like kind of a, I just got spotted, but it's kind of a, um, more later game item, um, more new game plus kind of item, even though you don't have to do it in new game plus. Um, basically if you give it to Curl upcoming, if you just do decide to give it to Curl, it makes the game a hell of a lot harder. Uh, it makes it so enemies will hit through your block. Normally you can just block it and it will block all damage unless it's a perilous attack. But with that, Curl's Charm given to Curl. That will make it so... Um, the enemies will do half the damage they would do if they hit you straight on if they hit through your block. So, yeah. And if you do get that to him, you can take it away by talking to the Sculptor afterwards. I'm not going to be doing that in this playthrough. I'm probably not going to be doing that in any playthrough ever. Because, yeah, it makes the game... Way, way harder. <gasps> also, I apologize ahead of hand for any technical issues this series has. Xbox's recording feature is extremely broken for recording on the spot. Um, like recording from now, you know what I mean? So. If anything happens, or if like a certain five minute section or ten minute section gets skipped at some point, that's the reason. Xbox's bullshit ass system. So. Raise your head. We're about to get the sword here, though. And also, um, because this is going so fast, and because I'm doing a voiceover, uh, if I don't mention something that I do in the recording, like if I pick up a really important item and I don't mention it because I'm talking about something else, please just pay attention to the recording. I'm probably not going to catch everything because I'm going to be trying to talk about stuff. So, you know, um, makes sense. It would make sense to just uh, pay attention to the recording, and then if I'm talking about anything unrelated to the recording, I try to listen to that too. And now I'm going to be just simply all the dialogue, all the cutscenes, all that kind of stuff. Basically, right here, you can give Kuro's Charm to Kuro. I would recommend not doing that. You can't even do it on your first playthrough. Um, but you also get the healing gourd. You can equip it in your inventory, and uh, well, it heals you, obviously. But now we got the first fight sequence, which uh, is really easy, even for somebody who isn't adept with the game. Um, it's still pretty easy because it's made to be easy, at least compared to the rest of the game. But we will have a mini boss up ahead. And I'll try to talk a bit more about deflections and all that kind of stuff. Um. What I would really say is that deflecting just takes practice. It's not like uh, other things like in, in Dark Souls, where it's just like improvisation. Deflecting really takes practice. Once you get good at deflecting, you can deflect enemies' attacks without even knowing when they're going to attack. So, like without even knowing their attacks and how they attack, I mean. But here's the mini boss, first ever mini boss in the game. 
It's pretty easy. I, uh, all you gotta do, and this basically applies for every mini boss or boss. Well, at least if they're a sword wielding, smaller humanoid boss. Um, not only be always trying to deflect them, but be always trying to attack them at the same time. Um, good advice that I've heard about this game is attack until you have to deflect, and then deflect until you can attack. Uh, I think that's amazing advice for basically almost any enemy in this entire game. So keep that in mind. Anytime you could be attacking, be attacking. Anytime where you can't be attacking, be deflecting. So yeah. Now also right here, you are supposed to go along the wall, but I did the pro skill strategy of jumping. It doesn't really mean anything, but you know. Might as well. This is an eavesdrop opportunity, I'm skipping it. Um, even though I did look lock onto it. I, I locked onto it just to kind of show eavesdropping. So, that's the mechanic. Sometimes it will give you some good hints about how to um, progress in the level. Or maybe hints of a future level or something. Or just little story stuff. That one right there just says that the dudes are pretty afraid because they're probably going to be going to war soon. And they are. So, yeah. We're about to have the first boss in the game. Not really a boss, especially because you can't be. Well, I mean, you kind of can, but not really. Of course, it's a Genichiro. Um, as you can see there, I just skipped the cutscene. Um, but this boss right here, it doesn't matter how good you do in the fight. Fighting practice for when you fight him later, because you will fight him later. But, um... It doesn't really matter if you win or lose. You'll see here that I try really hard and I still lose. I have beaten him before, only on New Game Plus though, because it's much easier. Because then I have all the skills and stuff. Like the Nakiri counter for the, the thrust attacks, all that kind of stuff. But you'll see. Um, you don't have to win against stuff. If you really just want to continue with the game, you can literally just stand there and kill you. Because even if you do beat him, and I have beaten him before, so this is what happens if you do beat him, well, beat him. Slightly different cutscene plays where he falls back a little bit, and then he throws a short at you, distracts you, and still cuts your arm off. So no matter what happens, you're gonna get your arm cut off. Obviously, it's like the main plot point of the entire game. So they're not gonna just happen. Um, so yeah, I'm trying my hardest here, and I do get his first self bar down, but uh, I lose because you know, on New Game Plus, I've beaten this because it's easy as this. You've got all your skills. Uh, I don't mean like skill. I mean like you have your actual skills in your skill tree. Which you'll get that later. Um, but what I mean is that uh, basically not only do you have your skills, but you have more health and more attack power. All this kind of stuff that makes it a lot easier. So, yeah. But you can see in the top middle, that's the posture bar of Nichiro. Um, Every time you perfectly click by clicking LP, it'll go up. Attacking will make it go up, and this is what I'm doing right now. I'm attacking until I can attack and reflect and reflect. Right there, I got hit because uh, I kind of dodged away a little bit, but I jumped in the wrong direction. Sometimes stuff like that happens. You'll notice I jump and he does a sweep, and uh, yeah, that's what you want to do. When he does a sweep and that symbol shows up, you got to jump over it and then try to jump off his head because that will do like a really good amount of posh damage. When he does a thrust attack, you can deflect it, but also, um, and I mean a perilous thrust attack, not just a normal thrust attack. A perilous thrust attack means that that symbol show up. But, uh, if you get a perilous thrust attack, you can not only deflect it, but once you get a certain skill called the Makiri Counter, you can step on the blade and do a lot of posture damage. It's also pretty easy to do. Right there, you can see I thought it was a sweep because I saw the symbol and he hadn't done the thrust just randomly yet without doing a jump attack. So I tried to jump over it, but she's and I lost. Um, but you still get your arm chopped off even if you do win. So, don't worry about it. It's kind of fun to be like, yeah, I beat Tutorial Genichiro. But it's really not a big deal. Because he's not, not even a real boss. So, yeah. Um, but now we are in the actual real game. Um, there will be more than this. It's not just the tutorial. I know that it's called the tutorial, or at least that's what I call it. Maybe I called it something else. I don't know. I don't know. I'm skipping through all this dialogue. This dialogue kind of progresses things. Um, but I'm going to be going to the first area and killing the first mini boss as well. And I'm also going to be talking to training dude. To try to uh, you know show how he works. So yeah, talk to the sculptor there. 
Um, there is another NPC that shows up to the right of the exit of that room uh, later, which you'll see later. Right. Um, but for now, she's not there, so don't worry about it. Either way, this is the first couple of turtles. They're basically like bonfires in uh, Dark Souls or Lanterns in Bloodborne. You rest them, you get your health back, you get your heal heals back, you get all that kind of shit back. But you do but either way, this is the training sir, guy. Please, uh, you can train a lot. There was a few like oh, some colors. I can't help it. What the fuck are you saying? Why don't you like come in? Warm well. Wow. Very well. Right then, they say. In that case, I stand as your opponent. <laughs> Okay, okay. We are back. I, I think my mic just cut out for some reason. Fucking garbage ass bullshit. Either way, this is the training guy. You can train your attacks, your deflections, all that kind of stuff. This is probably the only time in the game I'm going to be training with him because I know how to attack and deflect on this random bullshit. But if you have trouble with deflections or with like the Bakiri counter when that is unlocked or some more complicated shit after those are unlocked, you can go to him and try to train it. It's very basic, uh, as he'll always constantly do the same move over and over. But, it can help in some ways. Um, and yeah, it's kind of just a little training thing that you can do. Kind of fun, I don't know. But, that's basically the, his only purpose. There is a quest relating to him once you get a certain uh, item. Th then you can kind of do his quest. Uh, because he's infested, he's undying. He's, yeah, he can't die, basically. That's kind of the story behind it. Behind him. But now this is the step dodge one where you can dodge it's, you know, pretend Dark Souls stuff. Now, something to note about the step dodge, and I know a lot of people from Dark Souls are going to act like this. A lot of people are going to use the step dodge to try to dodge attacks, and it does get iframes. The jump actually also gets iframes. But the thing is, and if you don't know what iframes are somehow, it's invincibility. It's frames where you're invincible, uh, and you can't get hit, even if an attack goes right through you. But Basically, those, I mean, technically you can do it. And for some bigger bosses, that's what you want to do because, you know, it's not about deflecting attacks from that giant boss. It's probably not going to have their posture break. But for most of the stuff, um, you're not going to want to step dodge. Uh, at least not to avoid attacks. If you're like, if, it, if the enemy's about to do a really difficult move that you know you can't deflect, then you could maybe try to dodge away and let them do that move. Or if they have like a certain combo or, or something like that. You're trying to get away from them. The step dodge is about positioning. It's not about trying to avoid the actual attacks. It's about I'm going to get in a certain position where I can avoid the attacks better or where I can attack myself. So don't use step dodge as trying to dodge attacks. Unless, you know, it's the only real exception to that is bigger bosses. But even then, most of the time, I don't use the step dodge. Most of the time, I use the sprint, just holding B instead of pressing it. Because the sprint. You run insanely fast, and you have infinite stamina, so that's what I normally do. Um, but yeah, Come back whenever you like. if you that's the training, dude. Um, and we're going to be heading out into the actual first level now. Um, the first level is pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, it just meant to teach the mechanics of the game. Of course, I got the grappling hook here, teaching you how to use the grappling hook, which I don't think I even need to explain that you have to press LB, or LT, <laughs> uh, because... I don't know how anybody would not know that, especially because if they read the tutorial thing. And also, yeah, I'm skipping a lot of the tutorial stuff. Most of the t stuff is because, for most of the time, it's because the tutorial stuff really only shows up in the start of the game. So most of the time, it's stuff people have already seen, uh, and they know how to grapple or whatever. 
And even if they don't, if it's a, like a later game thing, like, you know, when you get the ability to dive underwater, then I'll kind of explain it. Because maybe you haven't got to that point yet, and you're using this guy to try and figure out how to get to that point. Yeah, enemy loot, you know, you can do it from far away. Hold X, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, now here, we're actually going to go around. You could face them head on, and yeah, they're easy enemies. But if you just started the, in this game, they might not be easy enemies for you. They might be, you know, hard enemies, or average enemies, or I don't, know, I don't fucking know. So... We're going to go around and try and get the drop on one of them, so we only have to fight two enemies instead of three. Um, and we're going to be taking out the gun guy. Now, there are guns in this game. People have guns, so stay wary of that. Uh, one thing to know about people with guns or projectiles or shurikens or something like that, anything where they can throw, throw or shoot something at you, um, is that don't jump around them, because if they hit you with a shuriken or with a, a blade or whatever they throw or shoot at you, while you're in the air, it will do, I don't know exactly how much damage compared to normal, but it's like probably at least double damage, and it also destroys your posture. So seriously, don't do that. Do not jump around projectile throwing or shooting enemies. Um, but other than that, that's really all the advice I can give for these areas around here. This is a very easy area, and you know, I, even I, when I was shit at this game and first played, uh, I didn't have much trouble with this first area, besides probably maybe the Chained Ogre, I don't know. Um, which we'll see him in the next episode. This is another Sculptor's Idol. Um, forgot to mention the first one, but I'm sure you noticed it. Two Sculptor's Idols in this first section. Um, Sculptor's Idols, they're kind of everywhere in this game. They're very common. Uh, I feel like some could be cut out. <laughs> because, you know, it's taken that Dark Souls 3 level of bonfire craziness to a whole new level. Yeah, and I also like to mention I did play Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne before this. This is the shuriken wheel, by the way. We're going to head over to the sculptor at the end to try and fit it. It allows us to throw shurikens. A good thing about shurikens, also, you can, of course, use them on enemies to knock them out of the air. Like I was saying, how enemies can use that against you. But also, for dogs, for wolves, for any type of canine creature, you hit him with one shuriken, 99.9% .9 of the time they're dead instantly, which is great. Because you don't have to worry about it. Now, this is the first mini boss. He has two death blow markers, so he's going to take two kills to hit, but I'm sneaking up on him. Always sneak up on a mini boss if you can. 99.9% .9 of mini bosses you can sneak up on. So do it. It's a great idea because it literally slits the fight in half. But this guy is pretty simple. I believe he actually has the same moveset, or at least a similar moveset, to the first guy, the Shigenori Yamauchi, or whatever the hell his name is. That, that move right there, where he surrounds him with like bluish flame smoke kind of thing. That means he's regaining posture. If he gets off that move, he regains posture. And that right there is what I call bullshit because uh, the little tutorial appeared right there and it didn't let me avoid his attack. But um, basically, when he does the, the blue flame smoke thing, you don't want to let him get that off because he'll regain a lot of his posture. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And you can see I get my posture broken multiple times. Normally when that happens, an enemy will go for a careless attack or a really strong attack that might instantly kill you or might do like a lot of damage like how we go for you know an insta kill now that right there i actually missed the jump of him i jumped a little bit too far but right here you can see we killed him he's a pretty easy mini boss and he also gives you your first prayer bead and he also gives you your first gourd seed now for prayer beads you need four of them uh so four mini bosses um and you can head back to a sculptor's idol and submit four of them to the thing and then you'll use up four of them and you'll get an increase in health and an increase in posture which is really good um and for gourd seeds you can head back to the dilapidated temple the area was at with the sculptor and there's going to be a lady there called emma who we're going to talk to in like two minutes and basically if you give her the gourd seeds then she'll upgrade your healing gourd so right now we can only heal once but once we give her the gourd seed then we can heal twice which is awesome, because it's better. You can upgrade that all the way to 10. You can also upgrade with prayer beads 10 times, so 40 prayer beads. Although, I would like to note that two prayer beads are actually locked behind a certain area um, that isn't like a normal area. It's an area that normally you'd only go to if you're going for a certain ending. Uh, but you can still go there even if you're not going for a certain ending. Um, and I will be going there just to kind of show you how everything works. I might not be beating the boss there, because in my opinion, he's the hardest boss in the game. But I'll be beating at least the two mini-bosses to try and make sure I can have it. But this is Emma right here. I'm just going to be skipping through the, the dialogue. Um, basically, she's like the healing lady. She says that she serves a master, and she can't say who she serves because it's too dangerous for the master. And um, then you talk about like the healing gourd and stuff. 
And then you can give her any gourd seeds that you find, and it will increase your uses of the healing gourd, which is awesome. And I'll be picking up, of course, all of them, of course, uh, over the course of the game, and all the prayer reads. So, yeah. Um, now we're going to go talk to the sculptor. We're going to get a shuriken wheel fitted so we can use shurikens. Yeah. To do this, you can just talk to him. Um, and there was, when the first time you talked about how you found a shinobi tool, all this kind of stuff, you present your prosthetic, you can fit a new uh, shinobi tool. Eventually, you'll be able to upgrade uh, shinobi tools. Right there, we just added the loaded shuriken. Now we have shurikens. There is, I think, around nine or ten different uh, shinobi tools that you can get in this game. And most of them are found in the first half of the game. So, But as you can see, we just picked up a spirit emblem right there. And uh, once you equip the Lotus Shuriken, then you can just use RT if you have Spirit Elms, and you'll use like a Shuriken or whatever you have. Um, so that's basically it for this. Um, uh, for Spirit Elms, normally you start with I think 15 that you can hold, and you can upgrade it to I think 19 is the max, maybe even 20. But yeah, uh, Spirit Elms, all that kind of stuff. I'll talk a lot more in depth about a lot of the more enhanced or advanced mechanics later. But for now, that's basically this first uh, episode, the tutorial stuff. I know a lot of people have already seen this or played it, but I'm not going to start in the middle of the game, like I said. So we're going to continue again, and uh, hopefully... Everybody